Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial about using the software for the little arm. As you can see I have the arm uh, set up down on a table with a couple of blocks and what I'm going to do is we're going to walk through how to move the arm using the new GUI and get it all set up and working and then how to actually record a sequence and then use the various new functions inside of the software. You can see right now that the arm is plugged in and it has the USB cable connected. The USB cable has to be connected to the computer for the software to open up. Otherwise, you'll get uh, an error when you attempt to open up the software, which will be like fail to execute script. That's because the Arduino has to be connected to the computer in order for the software to open up. But that changes depending on what version you have. Some of the very newest versions don't have that problem. So let's go ahead and open up the software give it just a moment here. I'll move it over here into this screen and maximize it. So here you can see the software. The very first thing you want to do is actually go up to the current USB port and you will choose the com communication port that the Arduino is connected to. It's generally not COM1. Uh, you can try com generally it's COM7, COM5, COM6, somewhere in there. Um, but you can experiment with it. If We'll try COM1. If you don't have any kind of a feedback, like in this case you don't, you can go ahead and kill it and try a different communication port. In this case, since it can't communicate with the Arduino, it's going to get caught up in a problem, so we'll just close it up and start it up again and use COM7. We know that COM port isn't the correct one, so just close it and open it back up. Right here, and then we've got COM7. Now, with COM7, we should be able to move one of these, and the arm positions should all update, as it appears they are. And now I can move the base. I can bring the shoulder down, bring the elbow down, just like this, and adjust the gripper. So let me face that up towards the camera a little bit better. Now I can move the gripper. So there we go. Now I have basic control of all the joints, and as you saw, each one of the scroll bars corresponds to 180 degrees of movement per each joint. So I can move all the way left or all the way right. And that's its full range of motion right there. So if you're starting out with the kids, maybe have them just kind of move the joints around and see what the maximum and minima are. That'll be useful to them a little later on. Right now you can see that the there's kind of a leg between my scroll bars and the arm actually catching up to the position. That's because the speed is set so low. Uh, the recommended speed is generally about 13 to 14. Uh, if they go much faster than that, it'll make the arm jerk around. Like right here, you can see that's moving pretty fast. It's not a, it's not a bad deal for the arm, but when you record it, then it will move even more quickly than that because that is moving as fast as I can move this with my mouse and we don't particularly want it to go that fast. So I'm gonna keep this down around 12 and 13, that's the ideal position. And that'll keep it controlled and keep the kids from potentially breaking it. Like if they ram it down into the ground right now, like doing something like that, that can damage the servos. So you want to avoid that. So keep it down around 12 and that won't be an issue. So we've talked about the USB connection, make sure that's set up before you get started. Then you've got the control bars for each one of the joints, you've got the speed, and then you've got go home right here. That's our home position for this arm. It'll vary from one arm to the next depending on how the arm was put together. Um, and it's a good determination. The ideal situation is to have the arm pointing in the same angle that it is right now, a slight kink in the elbow, but basically straight up. But the shoulder should actually be almost dead center facing forward. That would be the ideal position. It's not a big deal for general use or anything else but if you ever want to do something real precise or you need a full range of motion you might go back in there and readjust the shoulder so that's just a good check and it's also a good place to just start like every sequence that you ever start when we start recording things start at home and then you know exactly where you can begin and there's a very very clear beginning and end alrighty now we do want to go ahead and actually create a sequence here so let me get this rearranged again right about there okay so what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, let me do one thing here let me just let's go uh, I'm gonna try to record picking up that block 
So in order to record anything, what you do is you record what are called waypoints. And a waypoint is basically this collection of angles, this position of the arm right at the moment. It'll record the position of each one of these scroll bars and stick them into a file. So let's go ahead and just record this. This will be our starting point. Record that. I want to open up the gripper to make sure it's ready because I'm going to pick up the yellow block and I'm going to put it up onto the blue block. So now let's the gripper is open. Record that so that it doesn't meld together because let me actually let me clear that and let me show you something. If I try to move the elbow shoulder down, I'll move the shoulder down and I'll close the gripper. And I'll record that at once. And then let's uh, move the shoulder back up and open up the gripper and I'll record that. In order to play a sequence, you just hit play sequence, it's pretty clear. But you can see as it moves, the gripper, play that again, the gripper and the shoulder are moving at the same time. So if you don't record a single joint motion like this, let me show you something else. We record the gripper close, record that. And then we move the shoulder down, record that, and then we open the gripper, record that, and then we move the shoulder up, record that, play sequence. You can see that it closes the gripper for first and then it moves the shoulder. And then it opens the gripper and then it moves the shoulder again. So close the gripper, move the shoulder, open the gripper, move the shoulder. That is the way you need to do it. You, if you want just the grip motion, you have to record just the grip motion. A lot of people and kids make the mistake of moving the shoulder down and closing the gripper and recording both of those motions at once, once, which means that the gripper is closing when it's moving towards something to grab, and then it's closed by the time it gets there, which is not always what the kid wants. So this is just how the motions are all combined if you record multiple of them at once. They'll all move there. So that's just kind of an FYI. Um, let's clear that sequence again. Again, the, just this button, clear sequence. That'll delete everything that you recorded. Try to keep kids from clicking on that and starting over from scratch. They don't always need to go start over from scratch. We'll talk about that in a moment. But let's uh, try to get down and grab this block. I'm going to record this as my home spot. Move over here. Record that. And then I'm going to bring the shoulder down. And I'm probably going to cheat on this a little bit. It's the maximum for my shoulder. I'm going to record that. You see I recorded both the shoulder and the elbow, which means they'll both move at once, which is good and clean. I'm going to cheat just a little bit to expedite this and move the block into position. Um, grip the block. You're going to over grip a little bit. That's not a big deal. Pick that up. Record position. And then bring the base around record that and then bring the shoulder down and right about there should do it and then we'll release the gripper record position and then bring the shoulder up and I'm gonna record that and now let's see if we can get this to play back the way I had it but grab the block pretty darn close let me try that one more time There we go. And now you just recorded the block stacking up. And that's a very good exercise for kids to start out with because it gets them familiar with how everything comes together. That should only take about 15 to 20 minutes. Most kids get a hold of it. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that now. Oh, wait a second. If uh, Let's start about the start loop and stop loop. If you have in like an assembly line situation, you have an assembly line feeding new parts all the time. So you want them to repeat the same task over and over again. So maybe you created a ramp that's filled with these blocks and then the kids can just hit start loop and then the arm will pick up a block and then it'll go to pick up the block again and it'll just keep on repeating and repeating and repeating. And then you can feed stuff continuously. If I quit bumping things. And it'll just do this and do this until the cows come home which is great because then the kids can actually demonstrate how an assembly line works. And if you want to stop, you just hit stop loop, and then once it finishes the current loop, it will stop. It just takes one click and then it's easy, and then we can go home again. We're back at the home position. Uh, I'm going to clear this sequence now since we've kind of got it, and I want to talk about the pause for one second. 
shoulder down. Uh, this time what we're going to do is we're just going to do a basic kind of a wave. I'm going to have the elbow go down. I'm going to record that up. Record that. I'm going to have it do this twice so you have kind of a reference. And then we're going to pause for two seconds. One, two, by clicking on pause for one second. And then we're going to move the elbow down, cord, and then back up, cord, then down, record. And let's play that. So up, down, up, and then pause for one second. Let's try that again. Up, down, up, pause, and down again. So you may have noticed that that wasn't quite a pure two second pause right here. One, two. The reason that pause uh, didn't happen quite so quickly is because it's a separation between the, uh, the control on the Arduino and the control on the computer. This pause happens on the computer. So it actually starts counting immediately after the signal is sent from the computer to the Arduino, which means that the pause actually starts on the previous movement. So the count of one, two starts when the arm starts moving up and then it finishes on the second pause. So if you want to do that, this is just basically a general delay. One second isn't exactly precise is what I'm saying. Uh, it's a general delay if you just want it to wait a little while and then you can adjust things. Now, there's something else that I want to show you we've been recording all of these sequences and everything else they go into a file called motion recording and here's that file right there and what it looks like is this this is uh, in a more general term this could be referred to as g-code but we just call it uh, general motion coordinates each one of these columns is the angle of one of the joints this is the angle of the base angle of the shoulder, angle of the elbow, angle of the gripper. And in this, uh, the wave that we just played before, let me play that again so you can see it. We're only moving the elbow. So all you see that changes are the numbers in the elbow. So we move, uh, let's play that one more time and I'll narrate it a little bit better. Let me get my software back up here play it. So we move the elbow up and then down and then up. Pause. So this in the recording we move the elbow down which is around 180 degrees and then we move it up and then down and then up and then we pause for two seconds and then we move it down and then up and then down. And you can see that in here. And then it's the speed is all set for 13 and again this is base, shoulder, elbow, gripper speed and if you want to change the speed you can increase or decrease this number if for some reason there's slop in your joints and maybe they're not moving all the way down to where you want them to be you could go down here and you could adjust this and actually I'm gonna adjust this down to 20 and then 20 here so you can see this and then save this file just like that and now if we play this sequence you should see the elbow move way farther back so let's do that and it does it moves way farther back than it did previously way farther back and then it moves down and then it's up close again which is the second part of the sequence and you can see that right there so if the kids are in there and they need to just get a little tweak somewhere inside of this it's totally fine to go in here and edit this file just make sure that <laughs> excuse me, that they don't add anything before or after the full sequence. Otherwise, the arm will basically break, and what it'll do is it'll jerk back into a weird position. So like right here, if I put this new line in right here, which a, a student might do, if I try to play this, the arm's going to kind of go crazy like that. And basically what we just did was we broke the arm because we gave it a set of coordinates that it can't interpret. It's got to be five numbers and then what's called a new line or an enter after it. Otherwise everything goes to heck. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this program.
and get it restarted again. And the arm will go back to its normal position because right here the Arduino is taking over because the computer isn't a part of it anymore. So let's open this up again. Get the USB port COM7 open. And we're going to clear a sequence now. And if we open up a uh, motion recording, which is right here, it should be empty because we cleared it out. And now it's all set up and ready to go. So if somebody has an arm that just goes crazy like that, there's something wrong in the recording that they've been editing. So you can just have them change that out. Now, kids will want to save their recordings. Uh, like if we record a wave here, let's just record another quick wave. Let the arm get updated. Just like this. Um, move the shoulder down. Put this up. I'm going to record this. And then record this. Record that. Okay, so we've got a three motion thing. We're going to save this file. And this is a current sequence that we have. We're going to save sequence as. And here we've got it on the desktop. So I'm just going to keep it on the desktop. And I'm going to call it wave one. And save that. Now, if we look on the desktop, I now have a new file called wave one. And inside of it are my three recordings. And this is also the current file that we're editing now. So if I want to record a base rotation, record this, and now we open up wave one, it'll have four numbers on it. So now we have that. What, but what if we want to go back to motion recording? Well then, if you want to open a sequence, open, then you start out in the upper level uh, Windows uh, directory, and you go to desktop, and you find uh, motion recording right here. And now motion recording is open. And if we play that, it won't have that base rotate that I just recorded. It'll just have the wave because motion recording only has these three movements in it. And of course, if you want to create a whole new sequence, then it'll ask you to create a new sequence. And this will be, uh, I'll call this dance just because that's a different name. And now we'll create a third file that can now be used. And it'll come over here and there's our dance one file. It's empty and new. So that's how kids can save recordings and open them up later on. If I open up Wave again, we'll be able to do that and everything else. And that's a general overview of how the software works. Uh, you've got the basic control with these, and then you can start recording positions and playing them back. These just open up these TXT files, which shouldn't really be edited unless the kids want to experiment with it for a little while. Um, and then you've got the start and stop loop for basic uh, running the same sequence over and over again, and then you have control of those files and creating new files. Hopefully that gets you started with the little arm and enjoy it.